So I'd like to extend a warm welcome to the guests of the member for Hawkesbury, including, including Julian Lisa, federal member for Barara. I also welcome Senator the Honourable Conchetta Fiovanti Wells and the Honourable David Clark, former member of the other place. I acknowledge Bruce McCarthy, former member of Strathfield, and the Honourable Kevin Rizzoli AM, former Speaker of this Legislative Assembly. Finally, I welcome councillors from the Hawkesbury City Council and the Hills Shire Council, all guests of the member for Hawkesbury. I now have the privilege of calling on the member for Hawkesbury. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Life is a journey of stepping stones that create experiences which craft a person's opinions, beliefs and passions. The road I have travelled has had its challenges and many of you here today have been beside me through good and bad times. I'm the girl from Fairfield in Sydney's western suburbs. My father, Colin Reid, died when I, suddenly when I was 17. He died of a heart attack which was smoking related. My dear mother Hazel raised my two brothers and me as a single parent. Nothing was gifted to us and yet I never felt as though I was deprived of anything except the love and the strong bond that I had with my father. His passing has left a wound in my heart that just won't heal. Dad was the sort of man that could fit in anywhere and you immediately warmed to him. He could walk into a room of strangers and within minutes he would make everyone feel very much at home. He used to whistle tunes better than anyone I know. Just like me, music gave him so much happiness and he brought happiness to many when he played his banjo, ukulele, harmonica or accordion. My journey in life has given me many life lessons that I can draw strength from. I shake my head knowing that something I did 39 years ago has been continually used as a tool against me to discredit me. It was a modelling assignment and every time I have run for a position in politics, those that would see me fail rolled out the story on cue. I asked myself, why is it that some would seek to shame me whenever I wanted to enter politics? Why weren't they celebrating my accomplishments? A decade on council, two years as deputy mayor, a career spanning the private, public, not-for-profit sectors, small business and almost two decades of volunteering as a proud Liberal. And my greatest achievement, and the one that makes me the proudest, is as a mother to my two beautiful children, Kelly and James. Women bring such a wealth of skills to politics, as they do to many other working environments. Shouldn't we embrace that? Shaming is a cowardly trait that has times manifested itself not just in politics but in the workplace, in social media and in the playground at school. And I think it takes a strong and determined female to rise above the mudslinging, to stay focused, stay determined and not to listen to the white noise out there. We need to stop defining people by the little things they do. Don't judge people by one moment in their life. Let's encourage authenticity in politics. Bringing together minds that collectively provide experience for different backgrounds and across generations, that's got to be good, don't you think? That's the foundation that Australia was built upon. Mr Speaker, the opportunity to stand before he, you here today was due to a classic Game of Thrones episode. <laughs> However, my journey into politics really started when I met Charlie Lynn, former member for the Legislative Council, who encouraged me to join the Liberal Party 19 years ago today when I was a charity advocate. Charlie, are you here in the room? I'd like to acknowledge Charlie Lynn as well. 
I immediately related to the Liberal Party values of freedom of speech, individualism, the right to worship, support of small business, less regulation, lower taxes, and giving people a leg up rather than a hand out. Giving back to the community was ingrained in me from an early age. As a young child, I would see my dad welcome neighbours on a Saturday morning to his garage to repair their bikes, the children's billy carts, the children's scooters, all for the cost of a smile. Dad had the best equipped shed in the area, a little bit like the castle. He was a handyman who built our home at Fairfield. He was a small businessman who owned a truck and he took great pride in that truck. He would service it. He'd also build and rebuild cars, utes, motorbikes and pushbikes, all from that garage and I saw those skills transferred to my brothers when they grew up. My cousins would come over our home to play with us and at the end of the day they would head back home with a new very short haircut, courtesy of Dad's hair clippers. There wasn't anything my father wouldn't do for anyone. Dad always found the time to give back. My mother, who's here with us today, is the quiet achiever, happy to work away in the background without wanting the attention that others seek. She has always had a great affection for her seven sisters and brother, and there is nothing she wouldn't do for them. Her loyalty and love of her children, their wives and husband, her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren is beyond compare. You have been the perfect example to me of how you should treat others. You are my rock, my compass, and I love you dearly. I'm sure my perseverance comes from my mother. Whenever something really challenged my mum, she would say, I won't let it beat me. She would never give up and always achieved her goals. That persisting trait sometimes has to be at my peril too because I have had to learn the hard way that you can't fix everything in life. You have to walk away when there's nothing left to give. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not about being a failure. I see it now as being a life lesson. Mr Speaker, I'm fortunate to be delivering this speech in such an historic week. It is a week where such accomplished leaders of this state have delivered the largest infrastructure project since the Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme, which took 25 years to complete at a cost of $820 million. On Sunday, Mr Speaker, I was to, delighted to accompany the Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, the Honourable Andrew Constance, the Minister for Transport and Roads, and my fellow councillors and parliamentarians, and also Hawkesbury locals on the first official trip on the Northwest Metro passenger service. Yeah. And I think there was Metro mayhem there at the time too. <laughs> this project was delivered 10 months ahead of time and $1 billion under budget. Yeah. It is on Hawkesbury's doorstep and I think one of the best ways to encourage Hawkesbury locals to include the Northwest Metro as a preferred means of transport is to make it easy and affordable access. Already commuters are familiarising themselves with new co uh, connective bus links and I'm advocating for park and ride solutions around Hawkesbury. My vision is to have large car parks built on designated land where commuters will drive to, park their vehicle and catch an express bus straight to the North West Metro which gives the traveller the choice of a train departing every four minutes. It gets more cars off the roads, especially during peak periods, reduces expenses of tolls, fuels, parking, and the headache of sitting in traffic. If we can achieve this, it will make moving about on the Hawkesbury Road Network so much easier, especially for many tradesmen and women who live and work in the area. You see, Hawkesbury Territory is tradie territory. That's the number one occupation in Hawkesbury. And I can easily relate to this group of workers because both my brothers, Bill and Michael, who are here today, are tradesmen too. It's not just tradespeople that want to get around the electorate in a timely way. 
It's the working folk who want to get home in time to have dinner with their family and friends. Parents and carers taking their children to and from school. Those travelling across town to medical appointments. Everyone should be able to move about at a reasonable pace. That's why I was thrilled last year when the Treasurer, Dominic Perrottet, announced funding for a business case for a third river crossing at Richmond, North Richmond. That news was received more than a round, it received more than a round of applause from those subjected to long traffic queues on Bell's line of road or Currajong Road approaches to the bridge. On top of that, the Morrison government has already budgeted 200 million for this crossing, and I know that Sarah Richards, the Liberal candidate for Macquarie, was instrumental in securing the federal funding for this. This project is a key link to the small and family businesses that have grown and evolved in Hawkesbury. I want to ensure that the community has input where this crossing should go. I believe it needs to be well canvassed. Let's bring the community along with this project so that there is a sense of pride and ownership for this significant piece of infrastructure in Hawkesbury. Just as I have seen with the Sydney Metro Northwest and how the community embraced that project as well. Another key piece of infrastructure that I want to see completed is the new Windsor Bridge. This has been a difficult project, thwart with protesters who pitched a tent on Thompson Square, Windsor, in a public space for almost six years. This year's state election result in Hawkesbury delivered a thumping mandate for the Liberal National Government to continue with this project, and with that result, the protesters pulled down the tent and restored the public space. Yeah. I'm now having conversations with the objector groups to find some consensus. I respect the fact that they are passionate about protecting the heritage of the area, but I'm also conscious that Hawkesbury residents have been denied a better option in managing the traffic in that area because of the objections, court hearings and upper house inquiries that have delayed this project. I'm excited about the support this government has bestowed on Hawkesbury with $13 million already budgeted by the Treasurer to build a new PCYC to support and mentor our youth. Hawkesbury City Council has identified a suitable site for this much needed project. Now let's get on with the job of providing a safe space where our youth can engage with role models and mentors. It will be a location where our youth can learn the skills to become productive members of our community through participation in sport and group activities that build confidence, self-esteem and values. Projects such as the Pitt Town Bypass are already in progress and I will be diligently ensuring that the work continues. The Pitt Town community has made representations to me on issues that are still outstanding and I want to work towards an outcome that deals with matters from many years ago. In my recent conversations with Hawkesbury City Council, the Hillshire Council and many residents, I'm aware that there are some infrastructure issues that are still unresolved. Know that I am determined to have these matters sorted and will be approaching relevant ministers to see a way forward with parts of the Hawkesbury electorate, including Lower Portland, Mulgoa and Windsor Downs. Mr Speaker, I want to touch on a topic that I see as a growing area of need in Hawkesbury, and that's aged care. Like many other electorates, Hawkesbury has an ageing population. Of course, my bias would be to declare that it must be the youth juice contained in the beautiful Hawkesbury River that continues to make our locals look like they're drinking from the fountain of youth. <laughs> that said, there are not enough facilities to take care of our seniors. Locals are telling me that they want to remain at home as long as they possibly can. They want to lead an independent life and they want to be given choices on how they care for their loved ones. Respite is an important consideration too, as well as understanding the real health challenges with dementia, heart disease, cancer and Parkinson's disease. Considering a centre for excellence in dementia and aged care is something I would like to escalate in conversation. 
But we can't stop there. Mental illness is an ever-present reality. I would like Hawkesbury population to have a better access to mental health services, especially for the youth of our electorate. I don't want Hawkesbury residents to feel isolated because they can't access proper care and treatment. Mental illness is often a silent illness. Clinical depression, anxiety, autism, bipolar and post-traumatic stress disorder are more frequent diagnoses now in our society. But how well we deal with these conditions remains a challenge. I'm keen to look at ways that we improve and support care in Hawkesbury for people because these are the people that I am to advocate on behalf of. Just as I've advocated for our residents who belong in the Hillshire Council local government area. I'm proud of my track record as a local councillor with the Hillshire Council. This third tier of government is a real grassroots connection and I get great satisfaction in finding solutions for people's problems. I have learned that the very small issues can escalate a resident's fears and anxiety unless you fix the problem for them. I saw that as my primary role on council and it has been so rewarding to see the results. Many of my friends that have met over the years have, are here today in the chamber and it's wonderful to see a very busy chamber and thank you for coming. I want to especially acknowledge two mayors that I have served under as Deputy Mayor for the Hillshire Council. To Mayor Michelle Byrne, who gave me her apologies very late today because she's not well, and former Mayor Yvonne King, thank you both for encouraging me to shine. To my fellow councillors and general manager, you have supported me in so many ways and I have been proud to work with such a stellar team for the leading council in New South Wales. I look forward to working with you in, until the end of the current term. Mr Speaker, today is a special occasion because I'm honoured to be in the room with several members for Hawkesbury. Firstly, there is me as the new member for Hawkesbury, and that's such an honour. Then there's Dominic Perrottet, who was the previous member for Hawkesbury. Ray Williams, the member for Castle Hill, was the previous member for Hawkesbury as well. And Kevin Rosoli, AM, was the former member for Hawkesbury, and he is here too, and I want to acknowledge Kevin. Can I assure you that the recent mention in this chamber of his passing was greatly exaggerated? <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin will be pleased to have the record corrected, I'm sure. <laughs> Kevin, it's wonderful to have you join me today. Thank you so much. I want to take a moment to speak of my two children, Kelly and James. You have both made me proud. I love that you care for each other and contribute to my happiness in so many ways. Your tenacity, determination, sense of humour and appreciation of the Australian way gives me a deep satisfaction. Kelly, thank you for your insightfulness and your love. I am your greatest fan forever and know that I will love you dearly always. To James, your caring and protective nature has been so reassuring for me. I am blessed to have you as my son. To Wyvern, thank you for the respect, love and patience you show me. You are always there for me and I know that you care. I would like to thank the people of Hawkesbury for placing their trust in me. My first responsibility will always be to them. To the Treasurer of New South Wales, Dominic Perrottet, I have watched you grow from a young man just entering politics to a talent well beyond your years. This government is well served by you. Thank you for this opportunity. Can I also thank Damien Tudorhope, Conchetta Ferrivanti Wells, Tanya Davies, Greg Smith, Anthony Roberts, David Clark, Kevin Connolly, Tina McQueen, Aileen MacDonald, Charles Perrottet, Dallas McInerney, the list goes on. I would also like to acknowledge Julian Lisa in the gallery, David Elliott, Mark Taylor and Alan Cadman. 
Mr Speaker, I've drawn great strength from women in the Liberal Party too. I want to make particular mention of a few very special women who have been beside me for the whole journey. To Liberal Women's Council President Mary Lou Jarvis and Liberal Women's Council past President Chantelle Fonari Osmond, thank you for your unwavering support. Your advice, resilience, loyalty and friendship will always be with me. You are both very talented women. Your time will come. To Anne Yule, you were always there to console me after every pre-selection loss. <laughs> and there were more than a dozen, I can tell you. I've had 18 pre-selections in my time. Anne, you are the quintessential loyal Liberal. Thank you for being here today. To Natalie Ward, your guidance as I've entered Parliament has been most appreciated. I thank you for the time you give me. I want to thank the Liberal Party and in particular the Hawkesbury State Electorate Conference and my friends and my supporters. Many of you travel great distances to share this with me this evening and I thank you. A special mention, Mr Speaker, to Jill Reardon and John and Margaret Berenshot for your fantastic effort in the campaign. Thank you so much. To my campaign team, Rick Aloggia, Patrick Connolly, Bruce Mac McCarthy, former member for Strathfield, of course, Sean Fannin, and my wingman and campaign manager, Brooke Collins, OAM, thank you for an outstanding effort. To Paul Osborne, thank you for travelling on this bumpy road with me. Today is a day of celebration but know that I still carry my sorrow in my heart for your boy, Noah. Just as I pine for my nephew, Colin, whose life was cut short. What water does. <laughs> Special mention to Peter Higgins, Tony Jeffcott, James Butler, Ross Colosimo, Kenters Rotary, the Friends of Glenhaven, Mick Mathers and Lester Vincent. Thank you to my electorate office team, Adam, Marco, Laura, Mark and Nathan and my colleague David Rossi. Now the next chapter begins. I would like to conclude with a short quote from Winston Churchill. You have to throw in a quote every now and again, don't you? <laughs> he said, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. Thank you.
So you want to do another couple of hours? Did you? Yes, I think I'm right. Are you? Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah. Well done. Getting there. Are we going back to... Yep. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. are. Yep, yep. Because yeah. your amendments will come up shortly. <laughs> Congratu my uh, congratulations also to the member for Hawkesbury. Uh, inaugural speech is now having concluded.